Welcome to Webisode 5. My name is Eric Haddlestead, and I'm the Energy Democracy Program Director at CURE in Minnesota, and a member of the Rural Power Coalition. Our 90-minute webinar has been turned into a six-part mini-series to help people like you understand why rural electric cooperatives are integral in the fight for energy equity and for clean energy as well as to share details about the Rural Power Coalition's $100 billion bill to reinvest in rural America and how you can join this movement for rural power. The previous webisode took an in-depth look at the benefits of retiring coal with the Rural Power Coalition's reinvestment proposal and the positive impacts for rural communities. In this episode, we will take a look at the Rural Power Coalition's seven-point platform to reinvest in rural America and the rural energy system. You've heard so far electric cooperatives are facing a variety of different problems, from reliance on coal to the overall economics to issues of equity and democracy. Co-ops have a lot of issues facing them and also facing the rural communities that they serve. To make matters worse, many of these issues have been, uh, you know, kind of highlighted, as Chris has said, by the pandemic and by increasingly severe weather events around the country. In order to address these critical immediate issues, as well as these broader systemic issues, the Rural Power Coalition put forward the letter, which many of you have signed on to already, or many of you have seen before, um, outlining federal initiatives that propose solutions to these initiatives. We have a summary of those on the screen here. Many of these are probably fairly familiar with, to you. I, I imagine many of us uh, on the call are familiar with uh, LIHEAP, the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program and others, but we wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about demand number three here, the $100 billion for federally insured hardship loans with conditions for forgiveness which many of you may be less familiar with. So the uh, Rural Utilities Service has two main types of loans to rural utilities. Treasury rate loans, which many co-ops do business with. Treasury rate loans account for essentially $45 billion of total debt held by electric cooperatives in this country. As you can see, there's a, a variety of different conditions to those loans, but key among them is that uh, they're not federally insured. There is a second type of uh, rural utility service loan, and that's the hardship loan. Now, this is a loan that uh, has not been funded for um, quite a few years. Its last appropriation was in, in the 1990s. Essentially is, is there to assist cooperatives who are enduring overwhelming hardship. Granted, as you can see, the interest rates between these are quite a bit different. And the reason for that is in one of the previous times the hardship loan was used, that interest rate was adjusted uh, to be higher than the current treasury loan uh, interest rate to essentially be a punitive measure. What we would propose to do is make use of this already existing hardship loan program to make slight alterations to it. So as uh, we all remember over the last year, we've had some really unprecedented th things happen. And one of those was the, uh, the CARES Act. Uh, the CARES Act funded the Small Business Administration to make loans that are federally insured and then offered conditions for forgiveness if those funds were spent in consistent ways with the national interest. Over the course of the last year, Congress has spent almost a trillion dollars in uh, federally insured loans through this mechanism. So what we would argue is we can do, we can entirely transform the rural electric system with a fraction amount of, of that money. The total amount of uh, electric cooperative debt uh, in the country that we we're, can absolutely validate is roughly $100 billion. So what, uh, what we would propose is to essentially entirely turn over the, the amount or the debt held by electric cooperatives. However, we don't want to just hand out free money to, to electric cooperatives. I mean, we've already seen that there, we have numerous problems across the electric cooperative sector, and we wanna make sure that we're spending that amount of money to get the kind of impacts we want. So in order to achieve forgiveness for these loans that uh, this program would provide, co-ops would need to do a variety of different things, including closing their coal plants, 
providing bill of relief to member owners and making the kind of investments that we really need to both serve member owners, but also create the electric system and <laughs> of the future. We hope you've enjoyed Webisode 5 of the six-part series. The Rural Power Coalition believes that passing our seven-point platform and the $100 billion Forgivable Hardship Loan Program in particular will be an integral part of Building Back Better. Like and follow the Rural Power Coalition on social media and sign up for email updates at ruralpower.us to stay informed and help advance 